Hi, it's Doug the Yankee Handyman. Today's project, we're going to skim coat the walls in this bathroom, uh, resurface them, make them all one smooth, consistent field. There's been years of, of patching and painting that's been done, and it's not that smooth, so we're going to sand it down and uh, recoat it with some joint compound. To sand this down, I've got more than one option. You can use a pole sander, a handheld sander, or you can use a uh, random orbit powered sander, uh, depending on how much you have to take down. A random orbit sander might be too much for this job. This pole sander would probably be ideal for this particular job. So I place the paper right to the edge on this hand sanding unit so I can get right up against the tile without damaging it. And then this, I left excess and fold it over so I can take some material off the corners when I sand the corners. After sanding, you can notice some of these discolorations. These were high spots with the, the last color of paint underneath the present color. So we've taken down these low, we lowered these down. So now we're going to skim coat and fill all the voids and make this all one flat surface. Make sure you dust it off prior to skim coating so you get a nice adhesion. I'm just going to remove the, the dust, like I said earlier, just to give us a nice clean surface for the joint compound to adhere to. Whenever you sand or dust, you should have a dust mask on. I'm not wearing one now, so you can hear what I'm saying. Otherwise, the microphone wouldn't pick it up. I'm going to use painter's tape and put it right on the top edge of the tile, just to keep a nice, clean appearance with the tile. For skim coating, I'm going to use a mid-weight joint compound, a ready-mix joint compound. This is a little drier and a little stiffer, very good for skim coating, not so good for taping. So it's a good choice if you're going to be skim coating a wall. And uh, hopefully I can put a coat on, do the whole room, and it'll be dry enough to second coat it immediately. I'm using a 12-inch hawk just to hold the material while I work, and uh, whenever you use the joint compound out of a bucket. Keep working around the sides, keep the sides nice and clean. That way you won't have any dry crumbs falling into the joint compound when you use it later. Uh, so keep the edges clean as you work your way down. That's a good tip to know. And keep the, the bucket covered when you're not using it. I'm gonna begin with a 10 inch knife. And I'll, I'll work all the, the large areas with this. And if I have smaller areas, I'll use a smaller knife to get into those smaller spots. Um, like I said before, we're gonna put a nice thin first coat on and it will dry quickly. So you don't have to lay it on like cake frosting. You want it nice and tight just to fill the voids and the second coat will fill it even further and you'll have the best results. <laughs> and you'll get, that's for the blooper reel. This area here had a, a built-in medicine cabinet that's no longer going to be used, so we're going to fill this void 
This will take a little bit more joint compound to try to bring it out to the, the surface of the wall. This area will probably take a third, a third application. I'm going to work around the edges first and I'll fill in the middle. No need to get the first application perfect. Just get it as good as you can, and you're gonna apply it at least one or two more times after that to make it look better. On this wall, the tile ends on the corner. So we're gonna put the mud and the knife at the edge and pull it away. And if you do get any joint compound on the tile, uh, a wet or damp rag will wipe it right off. That's the best thing about joint compound. It's a very easy cleanup. On well, this space, it's less than 10 inches. So the, the widest knife I have that fits in this spot is an eight inch knife. So I switched the eight inch knife. And now that the first coat is dry, we're gonna begin by just scraping off very gently any high spots or, or edges of the blade left. Uh, during the second coat, I'm going to use a wider knife, just going to make the job go a little quicker. Uh, you don't need every knife known to man to do a job like this, just one or two is a, will suffice. If you do get any excess on the ceiling, you just knife, knife up to it, and that usually rectifies the situation. This is basically how it looks after the two coats. Uh, there'll be a little bit of sanding, not much. If you are out, your walls were in worse condition, you might have to do a third coat. 
This patched area is gonna require a third coat to finish that up. But the whole reason behind doing thin coats, it dries faster, less sanding, less mess, less material. And uh, you can get three coats to dry faster, three thin coats to dry faster than one big heavy coat. A big heavy coat, you'll usually see big waves in the walls too. So the thin coats are the way to go. Once you complete, you should give it at least overnight to 24 hours, depending on the weather conditions, to let it dry completely and thoroughly before you paint it. Uh, you don't want any moisture trapped behind it that's going to try to escape through the paint and create bubbles in the paint. So that's, that's your area. If you have humid conditions, you might have to wait a little longer. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like videos like this. Thanks for watching.